All right. <clears throat> Good morning. Welcome to the first session of Automotive Linux Summit 2023. Um, my name is uh, Walt Miner. I'm the AGL Community Manager, and I'm going to give an update on um, where, what AGL has been doing this year and a little bit of what we have planned for next year. I know uh, Dan Kaushi already gave some of the information during the keynote, but hopefully I've got some, some, more, some new information. So uh, <clears throat> first off, who is this guy? So I've been the AGL community manager now since uh, 2014, which is to me a really long time. Um, I've worked in Linux uh, mostly since 2005 or so, when I started working at Motorola Mobile Devices, um, Linux Java phones. We were putting out the first Linux mobile phones in the world back then. And uh, I worked at Mentor Graphics, I worked at some tier one suppliers, and I did some defense electronics. And those are some pictures of uh, me on uh, some motorcycle trips, one to Yosemite and one with my new uh, BMW motorcycle that I got this year. I had my um, motorcycles thing here on my lanyard, but I forgot it today. So if you want to talk about motorcycles, I'm here for you. So last year when we were in Japan, um, my colleague Jan Simon and I, we took sushi classes. So now I'm an apprentice sushi master. The thing is, Whenever, you know, I live in Asheville, North Carolina, and there's, you know, a great need for sushi masters there, but whenever I try to apply, they tell me I need advanced training. <laughs> so I'm still looking for the advanced training. I was hoping to take another class this year, but I, don't have, I haven't had time yet. So <clears throat> this is kind of an overall timeline of what we uh, accomplished this year, and we still have a few more milestones. So, as you probably know, we, we name all of our releases after fish. And uh, the beginning of the year, we made our opt optimistic octopus release. We did about five releases, five patch releases after that. Um, we did our prickly pike release um, in the, about the middle of the year. Uh, and then coming up at the <clears throat> beginning of uh, next year in February, we'll have our prickly pike, uh, I'm sorry, quirky quillback release coming out. And uh, we just are releasing our first milestone release, are making our first milestone release on the way to making the final release in, in February. So prickly pike, which was the, again, it was the July release. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna explain our, our relationship with Yocto, but basically, the AGL is Yocto based. All of our all of our code is built on top of Yocto, Pocky, and Open Embedded, and we've been using the Kirkstone, the long term support release of Yocto now for a few years, and so Prickly Pike had our originally had the um, 4.0.10 release of Yocto, and we've updated it in later patch versions. Um, we included Rust for the first time because we, we needed that for the uh, Kuxa.val data broker. So that Kuxa.val is an implementation of the Covisa project's vehicle signal specification. Kuxa.val is main, was created and is maintained by Bosch. And so we use that now for our, our intra vehicle communication and for our vehicle to cloud communication. So I'll, I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So we made a lot of general cleanup. We um, included some new VertIO features. We made some demo image changes. So it was a pretty busy release. Um, you can get the full details on our release notes. And uh, we added Chromium Embedded Framework. So we were using a, a WebOS open source edition version of Chromium. And that was a very slow path of update from uh, LG. So we decided to move on to Chromium Embedded Framework, which is a more modern implementation of, of using Chromium. And so that was now in, as a technology demo in the Pike release. So this is just kind of a more detailed view of what we've done in Pike. Every time we do a, a Pike update, we have also updated the Yocto version so that, that 4.0.10 has moved up as we've gone along here. And uh, we have another uh, 1603 coming out in another couple weeks. Um, that's pretty much ready to go. We just need to, uh, we need to get it through QA. So Quirky Quillback. So Quirky Quillback is coming out in February. 
We are making the Milestone 1 release. We, we had a little hang up with QA and we found some issues and we wanted to get some extra features in. But um, Milestone 1 is about to come out this week. Um, we, as Dan mentioned, we're using Flutter. We're, the, the Flutter Embedder has been greatly improved throughout this year. And uh, the Flutter Embedder is now pretty up to date with baseline Flutter, upstream Flutter. It's now using version uh, 3.13.9. Um, <clears throat> we've made some, we made a lot of improvements to our Chromium embedded framework, um, Chromium implementation. There's a, a talk later today from, today or tomorrow, from uh, Egalia about talking about what they've done to the Chromium embedded framework. Again, we're much further up, so we're much further along on the upstream Chromium path. I think in the last six months, we've jumped from uh, version so a version in the 90s up to version uh, 118. So we've made rapid improvement compared to you know where we used to be in terms of keeping up with upstream. So we're actually going to deprecate that old version of the WebOS Chromium and remove it, remove the support completely. In connectivity, we've updated to the latest version of Kuxa.val, which is 0.42. Um, we now use the Kuxa.val data broker. And we're basically converting all of our APIs to use gRPC. Um, and then a co really cool thing that happened this year, um, something I've been asking for for years, is uh, some, for someone to create a, a demo, what we call a demo control panel. It's a, you can run it on a Raspberry Pi. You can run it on a, uh, a PC, on a Kimu emulator. But basically, it allows you to control CAN signals or vehicle signals going into the vehicle from a remote device. And then you can either write a script or you can toggle switches on the on the CAN simulator, and that was all done by one, uh, we have a we we sponsor every year a few Google Summer of Code students, and one of our GSOC students, uh, Sujintin, wrote that. Uh, our other GSOC student wrote some new um, open source speech recognition plugins for us. Um, so you'll be able to see that demo control panel tomorrow. There'll be a, a GSOC update. So our GSOC students will be giving a talk. I really encourage you to take a look at what they've done. They've really did some really amazing work in, in a short amount of time this summer. Um, and that control panel will be very useful for us for the next few years. I think everybody who's tried it out has really liked it. <clears throat> audio, we've done a lot of audio work, up, basically updating to the new Pipewire and Wire Plumber 1.0. So Wire Plumber and, and Pipewire finally released their 1.0 version very, very recently. We've gotten that onto our main, our main branch. Uh, our Mixer API was now, uh, is now being updated to use gRPC. And um, we added controls, specific controls for bass, treble, balance, and fader. Previously, we only had very detailed controls for more like a graphic equalizer. But this allows people to think more in terms of you know the the old school knobs you would see on a radio. We didn't really have that available in uh, Pipewire and Wire Plumber before. For Quillback, we're adding some uh, new BSPs. We've got Risk Five supported in AGL now. Sci Five has an unmatched board, and they're actually just built another 1,000 of the unmatched boards. It's called Unmatched Rev B. Those are now available. You can go purchase those. Uh, we'll be supporting the unrav, unmatched Rev B as well as the Rev A. I've got about eight of those uh, coming in for AGL to use. The new BeagleBone AI64 and the Beagle Play are also going to be available in Quillback. The AI64 is pretty much there already, and the Play is also in progress. Raspberry, 5, it was, Raspberry Pi 5 was just released. You can pre-order them, you can try to buy them. They're really the stocks running short, but they'll, I think, become more widely available as we get into 2024. So we've got the BSP ready for that. And then the new Renaissance uh, S4 starter kit is also available as a the BSP is available there. And I've already, Jan Simon and I already took a, a whack at uh, creating the, uh, the, the release notes for Quillback so you can get, get a little more details there. And I'll continue to, we'll continue to fill that in the next uh, few weeks as we get to the Quillback release. So here's our schedule for Quillback. Um, 
We'll do the M1, like I said, this month we're a little delayed. We were original, originally planned for the 30th of November. We're now going to be this week, late this week. M2 will be before Christmas. Milestone 3 will be a few weeks after CES. What we try to do is anything that we do, we, we, we show at CES, we try to get into Quillback so you can then download that and play with that, uh, do whatever you want with it. And the final release will be in the, in the middle of February. And uh, the slides are all uploaded already. I uploaded them before the, the talk, so you can take a look at these at your leisure. So, like I mentioned, AGL, we're, we're Yocto-based. We're trying to stick with Yocto LTS versions. Um, earlier this year, Yocto announced that they would be going to a standard four-year support model for their long-term support versions. We've been supporting Dunfell then for the last almost four years. It'll go end of life in April of next year. And our Lucky Lamprey release, which is our 12.x release, has been updated basically for every Dunfell release for the last few years. Um, you can see as we go end of life here, I just kind of showed we'll get out to 12.1.19. So we'll actually have made, I think, 21 releases of Lamprey by the time it's done. Um, <clears throat> which is pretty, which is pretty amazing for what we've done the last few years. Um, right now, we the, the the Yocto schedule shows that the last release of Dunfell is in mid March. So what that means for us is our more later versions of AGL have been supporting Kirkstone, which is 4.0.x. Uh, Kirkstone support will continue through April of 2026. Um, they will have a new Yocto LTS version 5.0, which is named Scarthgap. Um, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but uh, so Scarthgap will be released in April of 2024. AGL's uh, Royal Ricefish release will update, will basically move on to Scarthgap. And similar to uh, what we did with Lucky Lamprey, Quirky Quillback will become our long-term release for the next few years as we continue to track uh, Kirkstone. So what that looks like is we, like I just showed you a minute ago, we, we, f we finished the release in, in February and then I have, uh, I, I, I tried to map the, <clears throat> the Kirkstone schedule for next year into releases for us. We try to do them about every, about two to three weeks after the uh, Yocto release is done. So you see we have seven patch releases planned for, for Quillback next year. So this is the overall 2024 schedule. Um, I think it's the first time I'm showing this. Um, so pleased to announce that our, our late second half of the year uh, release will be called Super Salmon. An easy one. Most easy. <laughs> Super Salmon. Um, <coughs> every year, we, um, our steering committee goes through a process where they uh, vote on the most relevant features to work on for the year. And what this does is it doesn't necessarily determine all of the work that we'll do on AGL, but it does help focus our, our paid development on particular efforts. And um, Jerry's probably laughing right now in the front here. He's going to have an SDV uh, expert group update right after me, and he's going to tell me I'm all wrong. Um, but um, what I tried to do was... Um, what I try to do is summarize where we are with each of the with each of the steering committee um, um, with each of the steering committee priority items, which were the top ten or eleven. So SDV, the top item, top three were all uh, software defined vehicle related. Extending Vert IO support. Um, so Virtual Open Systems is doing some work for the SDV expert group. I, uh, the effort's about eighty percent complete. Um, it should wrap up by CES. Now, what Jerry needs to tell us in the next, you're going you're gonna to ask him this question, okay? Because I don't know what the answer is, because I haven't been able to talk to Jerry for a few weeks, because he's been traveling. He's right there. He's been traveling. So what I don't know is 
how that 80% complete or how completing this actually finishes the vert IO support to decouple the UCB. I think there's still a few more things to be done to finish the decoupling, but I don't know how much Jerry's going to tell us in the next session, okay? You ask him that on the Q&A. Um, the container orchestration, to be honest, that didn't really get started. Um, we had a guy working on it from uh, another company, and he kind of fell off the map. And So we're going to get that started again. Um, Panasonic is making great up to, up great strides on the unified HMI. Um, some initial commits were merged to Garrett last month. And we have some more commits that were actually made into Garrett this week that are in review. Uh, we were supposed to have a discussion about the unified HMI, but that one got canceled, right? Oh, that's not the one that got canceled. The Vert.io one got canceled. Yeah, see, that was the one that was canceled. And see, he would have answered the question, but now Jerry has to answer that question. Uh, but there, so there'll be a, a good talk on the unified HMI work that Panasonic has been doing, and they are making a, they are making great strides on this. Vehicle to cloud. So some of the features were vehicle to cloud related, um, <clears throat> and again, vehicle to cloud is kind of part of adjacent to software defined vehicle. A lot of people will argue without vehicle to cloud, without OTA updates, without the cloud data component, you don't really have a software defined vehicle. So uh, that's a work in progress to convert from those standard uh, vehicle signal specification object names to uh, something, that, something that talks that the cloud can understand. That's a work in progress. We expect to complete that in time for Embedded World, which is in Nuremberg in April. So we'll be showing some new demos in, at Embedded World as well as the new, some new demos at CES this year. Uh, additional reference hardware, uh, from my point of view, I know Panasonic's been hard at work with this with Qualcomm. From my point of view, there's no progress. Um, Flutter, so like I already said, we've made a lot of improvements in the Flutter workflow. Um, one of, and the Flutter and better uh, continued evolution, so we've got those new reference apps that Dan talked about from ICS. One of the things that we need to work through, we're going to have a kind of a wrap-up uh, session next week with ICS and our, our Toyota Flutter guys. We're going to talk about kind of that workflow. So we had to bring those Flutter, we had to bring the ICS guys on board, um, get them up and running on an AGL, uh, just get the, the UCB up and running for them. Um, so what lessons learned do we have from that and how easy or hard was it? Um, and how can we improve that? How can we get them on, how can we onboard new developers better and faster? So we should get some lessons learned and turn that into some uh, activities for 2024. Uh, numbers eight and 10 are more vehicle to cloud uh, topics. So there will be, I'll be talk, I have a couple slides on vehicle to cloud later, but there will be a, a vehicle to cloud expert group update by uh, Megan Knight tomorrow. RTOS support um, for AGL UCB. So again, in these mixed criticality use cases where you have the AGL with Linux running alongside an RTOS, we have, we've done a lot of requirements and design work or arch requirements and architecture work within our system architecture team. And that work continues to evolve. So, this is the list of the current, what did I do? <laughs> I broke it. Um, this is the list of active expert groups that we have. Um, our system architecture team, we have an IVI team, that's IVI production readiness team that's devoted mostly to IVI type topics, instrument clusters. So I'm just gonna give you a quick update on what each of these groups has been doing. The, um, <coughs> In the last uh, year, last six months or so, uh, we went through Confluence and created a much better, I think, a much better landing page for AGL overall with uh, very clearly marked links to each of the expert groups and the system architecture team. Uh, we're still, it's still a work in progress. We're still improving those, but um, we now have Confluence pages for each of our expert, expert groups as, as well as that landing page. Um, and there, the system architecture team has really been focused on that RTOS support for AGL. 
And they've been working with the SDV expert group on, on defining some of those use cases as well. The uh, IVI expert group, again, I have these slides all uploaded to the uh, um, schedule page so you can click on all these hyperlinks. The Flutter and Better is now updated to 3.13.9. We've got the new IVI reference design ready for CES. Um, and I had to tell my boss just now that we're not unveiling that this week. We're unveiling it at CES. Um, but it looks really cool. And uh, if you come to our all member meeting in January or February, rather, which he announced, we will definitely be able to show it to you there. So it looks really sharp. Uh, I think you'll really like it. It's a big improvement over our, our legacy UI. App Framework and Connectivity, um, Kuxa.val Data Broker, um, the Flutter and the web apps, as well as the Qt apps, the legacy Qt apps, are all adapted to use the Kuxa.val Data Broker, so they're all using gRPC now. We did a major documentation update on our documentation site, um, created a Rust mixin layer, so now you can use Rust on AGL. And the reason we had to do that, that Rust mixin layer is a Yocto thing, um, Yocto Kirkstone had an older version of Rust, and we needed a newer version of Rust to be supported for uh, the data broker. So now we can re more rapidly update our Rust versions. Um, that Yocto mixin, that Rust, that Yocto mixin layer for Rust was created by uh, Scott Murray, and uh, in our connectivity group. And uh, you can see there's the Confluence page for the App Framework group. There's also a separate one for the connectivity group. So um, <clears throat> SDV, you'll learn all about it in the next talk. I'm not even going to talk about this. This is all great stuff they've been doing. Uh, we have three talks planned for this week uh, and then a BOF session to close tomorrow out. Uh, so we can all talk about SDV. And I think one of the questions most of you are going to ask is, what is an SDV? And hopefully we can, we can answer that. Vehicle to cloud. Um, so we're working on this reference implementation for messaging between connected vehicles and cloud providers. The work is being done by, uh, largely being done by AWS as well as our connectivity group for the for the VSS part. Um, but intentionally, the interface is not going to be. It's going to be cloud provider agnostic, but we will provide a AWS reference implementation. So the idea is the APIs and the, and the specs, so to speak, will all be um, agnostic to the cloud provider. You can, use, you can use Microsoft, you can use whoever you want. Um, and again, we're tr not trying to reinvent the wheel here. We're not trying to create an AGL specific version of a vehicle to cloud service. What we want is to work with other groups like Covesa and other groups that are working on these types of uh, activities, make sure that we're all focusing on the same specifications and that AGL is implementing those specifications and providing the reference architecture for that. So we don't want to write specs. There's nobody on AGL that I know of who likes writing specs. Getting the right documentation is hard enough. Writing specs is even harder. So Megan tomorrow has a session with a full update of the vehicle to cloud activities. Instrument cluster expert group. Uh, this afternoon, Kurakawa-san will provide an update on the expert group activities. Um, basically, our Prickly Pike release had our full CES 2023 demo equivalent uh, with the containers solution that they have, and I think they're showing some of that upstairs in the in the AGL booth. And um, they're working on basically what they're going to. Um, provide in Quillback and uh, for CES this year. Our continuous integration and test group uh, expert group. So they're they're the guys who are focusing the folks who are focusing on uh, Jenkins and Lava and making sure that our Garrett CI works. Whenever you make a commit to Garrett, it goes through automated uh, CI, some automated testing. Um, we added risk five, or, or that risk five board to the Lava Lab. So now everything that we're doing, all of our any any commit that you do now gets run through uh, CI for risk five, as well as ARM, as well as Intel. 
Um, we're still trying to acquire that Renaissance S4 starter kit. We're going to get it soon. We we're looking at, but we I, I should have updated this. We're not looking at BeagleBone AI and Raspberry Pi 5 support. We've got them in there pretty much already now for Quillback. I'll skip that. So uh, you say, Walt, I want to get involved. How do I get involved? I love AGL. It's really wonderful. Um, how can you help? How can you help me? Or how can I help you? So um, if you're interested in any of these topics, all these expert groups have a Zoom call every other week in addition to the Confluence pages. So you can talk to the people who are actively working on it, learn what's going on. Um, <clears throat> so there's a, um, a call, like I said, every other Monday for Vehicle to Cloud, every other Tuesday for uh, the system architecture team and the, the uh, SDV expert group. Um, we have a weekly developer call. So every Thursday, if you have a question about AGL or how to do something or you're having trouble getting something to work or you just want to talk about AGL or listen to me blabber on for an hour, um, you can call into the developer call. Um, we've been really working on our, on our documentation improvements there as well. So uh, we've had some folks who very kindly volunteered their time to just do documentation updates. It's really helped our documentation. Um, the, the, the gentleman who was working on that, he's moved on to some other things now, um, but that's a continual uh, effort to get our documentation improved. And I think helping improve documentation, you will learn AGL. Um, just kind of the way it is. So here's some more information. If you want to, we have a, a mailing list for our uh, community, our developer community. We have IRC chat available on uh, IRC available on uh, Hash Automotive on Libra chat, and our weekly developer call. So that's it. Thank you. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to make up an answer.